All right, so this is going to be a pretty quick Tinker's Construct tutorial. It'll just cover like tool basics, and the next one will probably cover the more advanced smeltery tools. So first of all, you should start with this book. If not, you can spawn in. It's called Materials New. And you'll get three. I'll give you both. They're all three names right now. Materials New, Materials New again, which is slightly different, and Mighty Smelting. To change these books, all you do is get it creative mode, put the book up here, it'll transfer to the next book, like so, and I don't think this one converts back. Oh, no, Diary of a Tinker. I don't actually know what this one does. Let's see. Tinker's Log. So this is just an interesting little side book thing. So the main one here, what we just first start out with, is this one. Materials new, sorry, on the first day. It'll tell you all the recipes. Talk to you about ore berries. Tell you how to make books, and then how to make all the smelting books. So now that you know those, this is the first crafting recipe. It is a crafting station, which is pretty nice because any item you leave in there will just stay in there, as you can see when you exit out. The bad side is it's every player can use this, and if there's a few of you trying to craft something, you'll be fighting over the space because all of your items will be visible to each other because they stay in there. So to craft it, you just use a crafting table, you get a crafting station, and you can put a crafting station in here to get a half crafting station for some reason. I don't really know why, it's kind of cool, but... Next one is a pattern chest, which is just a blank pattern and a chest. And that can also be a half slab. So the next one is the actual blank pattern, which is two wooden planks and two sticks. Now the sensor table is what you need to craft all of your parts, or the stencils for all of your parts. So for that you just need a crafting table and a blank pattern. Sorry, you just need an oak wood plank, or just oak that wood planks and a blank pattern. It also becomes a half slab, like all of these. This one is a log and a blank pattern, and it becomes a part builder. This one is a crafting table and a blank pattern, and it becomes your tool station, where you actually assemble all the parts. This one is grout. So to make grout, you need clay, sand, and gravel, like so. It creates grout. And the grout you put in the furnace with coal or whatever to create seared bricks. Now four of these seared bricks will create a s well more seared bricks, like a block. And you will need three of these. So the last recipe is to take your tool station you already made and use your seared bricks and just four blocks of iron. Now this isn't really necessary right away, but if you want to create the more advanced tools you'll need a tool for is you can just use the tool station until you get enough iron and seared bricks to create that. Alright, so I'm going to pause the video quick. Alright, so now we're actually going to look at crafting the tools. First of all, I'll just skim through this book. So table of contents, tools, materials, and modifiers. Now this tells you what each tool does and how to craft it, like what exact what exact part. There's tool rods and there's also for more advanced tools, let's see there's tough rods and large plates and then regular plates so you want to make sure you get the right one. So hammer, natural abilities, area of effect, mine's a 3x3 three three area. So, so lumber axe which will harvest trees up to a max height of 30 if not it'll just mine them in a 3x3x3 three 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 block or cube. Excavator will mine a 3x3 three three area, much like the hammer, but it'll do it on sand, gravel, and dirt. The scythe attacks mobs in a 3x3 three three area, and harvests in a 3x3 three three area. The cleaver starts with beheading, you can upgrade it so if you're farming wither heads, it's a lot faster. Alright, now on to materials. Alright, so I'm going to skip through on materials, and we'll just start at paper here for now. You can see the durability, handle modifier, blah blah blah. So the main trait for paper is writable. So I usually have one piece of paper on every tool I make and one thomium because they each add one writable modifier per piece. So we'll have a paper and thomium plate. Just so I can have like two extra modifiers and put like another hundred redstone for mining speed or whatever else. 
and you can use just paper or paper stacks to make those tools, but it takes more paper than it would for just paper stacks. Alright, so anyway, on to Manny Elm. This is mainly what I make my tools of. The durability is determined by the hammerhead and the handle modifier, just as your handle. That will multiply your durability by that. The full tool durability is just talking about if it was entirely made of Manny Elm, then it would probably be about 3,000 with the head and the rod. Now the mining speed of the hammerhead is 9, the mining level of the hammerhead is 5, and the base attack is 2. And so the mining speed will mine pretty much everything. In other, if you've got metallurgy it might not mine everything, but in just regular Tinker's Construct, Dire Wolf, or Monster it should mine pretty much everything, except Bedrock. Alright, now get sk skip these. Alright, now here you go. This will tell you all your modifiers, like Diamond will add 500 durability, increase the mine level, which is, I generally just use an Emerald, because my mining level is usually higher, and I have a lot more durability by 50% than by just adding 500. So I'll add like 10,000 durability with 50%. Now speed, Redstone will give you extra mining speed. There's auto repair, there's auto smelt, that will smelt ore for you. If you have that with fortune, it'll drop quite a bit of extra ingots as well as just like diamonds so it's actually quite worth it. Still see the recipes. Lapis is fortune and beheading or sorry fortune and looting. We've got fiery. Another good thing about auto smelt is that it will actually smelt uh, it'll cook mob meat for you if they die while they're on fire obviously so that's really nice. Flux will just make your tool repair with energy and there's all these additional things you can put in there to modify it and add like additional modifiers. So you can add like three additional modifiers, this one's just creative. Okay, now on to the actual crafting of the tools. So your stencil table, this is where you'll make the stencils to create all of the actual tool parts. These are just three blueprints basically. So here you go, your blank pattern, you just hit previous and next, and then when you find one that you like, see this is fletching, it has nothing to do with this, but I'll pick that. And then you just take it out, and it uses up one blank pattern. So I've got all the patterns I need really for this already, so I'm just going to make a paper large plate here, which takes more than advertised because it's recommended for actual stacks of paper, I believe. Alright, so I've got a slimy slime tool rod for extra durability. Obsidian hammerhead. I don't. I think you can make. I'm pretty sure you can make obsidian hammerheads without needing a foundry or smeltery. So that's why I have that. All right. So I've got one extra modifier here, and I have this. And uh, so it reinforced. It's got reinforced, stonebound, and writable. It's got an absolutely terrible mine speed, but it can mine obsidian, so that's good. And of course, now with a redstone, we can just upgrade the speed if we want to. You can upgrade that to 50 with a block, or almost to 50 with a block, so like 45. Then you need to use 5 dust, because it only lets you go up to 50. And now that you're at 50, you can use blocks again. And it just repeats like that. With lapis, it only... So redstone counts as one modifier per 50, lapis would only count as one modifier for all three levels of fortune, so it's really nice to have. Now with this, you can put something like a flux capacitor, you don't need this, you can just use like a hardened flux capacitor, which is really cheap to make. And now it will use redstone flux instead of actual durability. And if I shift click this flux capacitor, it will charge it, if it's as long as this is on my bar. You can also just use a power suit and run around with it, and it'll charge your hammer for you. But that only does a limited amount, and you'll run out of power. This rain's really annoying. You'll start to run out of power after a while, and it'll just start doing like actual tool da durability damage to you, which is pretty bad, because then you have to get obsidian or whatever you use to make it. Go back in here with a broken tool like this, and put some cobblestone in there because cobblestone was the hammerhead, so that's what you used to repair it. If it was obsidian, you use, you use obsidian until it's fully repaired. 
and then continue mining. Now with these, you don't have to repair them until you run out of energy, and then start doing actual tool damage, which is pretty bad. So it's nice if you have a power suit and a flux capacitor that will charge with your power suit, because these will charge your tool a lot faster than just your power suit. And that is the basics of tools. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, like the video, subscribe, and if you want to see other tutorials, leave me a suggestion in the comments.